Serious. People have read it. What was the creepiest thing you experienced that you thought was paranormal, but was actually much scarier when you found out what really caused it? There was one time when I was younger that I was home alone in mine and my mother's old townhouse. I'd been downstairs in the living room and suddenly felt uncomfortable being down there alone, so I decided to go to my room. I get about halfway up the stairs when I feel this horrible sense of dread and panic, and I look back and see this complete silhouette of a man, complete from head to toe, standing in the corner at the bottom of the steps. I could feel him looking at me, even though there were no eyes. I ran up the stairs and locked myself in my room until my mother got home. It wasn't until years later that I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, which explained that happening and a lot of other things I was going through, seeing and hearing. I've gotten more used to the things I've seen and heard over the years, and the medication helps immensely. But I remember that so clearly, because that scared me so deeply. I'll never forget it. When I was eight, we were on a long holiday, staying with some family in a town called Surat. It's in country Queensland, Australia. I was staying in their son's room, who had moved to Brisbane for university. Each night, I had the same recurring nightmare of an alien tentacle trying to grab me. After a week, I was terrified of going to sleep, but my parents kept telling me that it was okay. I was just frightened because we were staying somewhere new and that it would be okay. Well, I couldn't get to sleep. I kept watching the clock, waiting for the sun to come up and terrified of the alien. It was just after 2 a.m. when a large tentacle landed on the bed. I screamed in terror as I felt the tentacle wriggling. I jumped out of bed and kept screaming. My parents, aunt, uncle, and sister run into the room to find me huddled in the corner screaming. Turns out it was an adult carpet python over two meters long, six and a half feet. Each night it worked its way under a ceiling tile and onto the bed. I still have an Indiana Jones fear of snakes. Why'd it have to be snakes? I had a friend who was staying at a ski lodge, and then he went outside at night to smoke a cigarette. While he was out there, he said it seemed like an invisible monster was coming right at him. He heard it stomping, even smelled it, felt its breath as it charged him, and then it passed through him and it was gone. Turns out it was a grizzly bear, stomping its way around on the floor directly underneath where he was. About seven years ago, my family rented a one-story house. It was originally one bigger house that was split off into two, and there was another family that lived in the other part that we didn't really talk with. During the night, I would hear what sounded like knocks above the ceiling, but any entrance to the small crawl space between the ceiling and the roof was patched up when the house was divided. For a while, I thought there was a ghost who lived in the attic, and I would have trouble going to sleep without a light on. After we moved out, I heard through the grapevine that the neighbor's kid was caught spying on the new people that moved in. Turns out that he had broken a hole in the ceiling of his closet to get into the crawl space and had been looking through holes that he bored in the ceiling overlooking the other part of the house. The noises I heard were him moving around on his arms and knees up there. As a young kid, I had nightmares of waking up to see my mother hovering over my bed by the window. She just blankly stared down at me and my sister. I'd get so scared yelling, Mom! Mom! And she never responded. It knew it was not my mom. When I was older, I told my aunt about it, and she told me they weren't dreams. It was real. My mom would go into our rooms randomly to check on us. She had serious mental health issues that got worse over the years. Occasionally, she would have episodes of anxiety or something happening to us and guard us at night. Due to the traumatic death of her first child, it apparently triggered obsessive anxiety when we were younger. I now know the whole fucked up backstory and can sympathize with why it would make any parent get to that mental state, but I still shudder when I think of the blank face stare. I still tend to associate the nightmare mom as not being my mom. Didn't think this was paranormal, but definitely thought it was creepy and ended up being more than I bargained for. When I was 13, I had a small jewelry box my mom gave me that had cushions for rings. I had six rings that I kept in it. Nothing of value. Think mood rings and silver rings. I was somewhat neurotic as a kid and had spent an afternoon arranging my room and I'd put the six rings in a specific order. I opened the box one day and noticed that two of the rings were out of order. I thought someone in my family had moved them because there was zero explanation for this. I asked my family if anyone had touched them and they all insisted no one had opened the box, but I was convinced someone had to have gone through it. 
My dad ended up going through our entire house, checking for missing stuff, and the only missing things were an old bottle of hydrocodone from the medicine cabinet and some of my mom's gold jewelry from a bathroom drawer. Turns out, there had been a string of robberies in the neighborhood where thieves had broken in but only taken prescription drugs and small gold items. None of the robberies had indications that the homes had been broken into, and things like laptops, diamond jewelry, and other valuables had been left alone. My family wouldn't have known anything was amiss, aside from the fact I was so convinced something was off. Literally my earliest memory. I was five years old and playing in a pile of leaves in our backyard. The yard had a brick wall at the far end. On the opposite side was a highway. There were a few openings along the bottom of the wall for drainage, I guess. So, I'm playing in the leaves and suddenly I hear this super weird noise. It was like a high-pitched yowl and then I see this weird thing emerge from one of those holes at the bottom of the wall. It was moving slowly and really weird and I froze in the leaf pile and just watched. I distinctly remember whispering to myself, a monster, because I was 100% thought it was a monster. It staggered up to the leaf pile and I realized it was just a cat. I knew what cats were because my dad loved cats and we had several pets. This cat was enormous and he was also very fluffy. Think Crookshanks from Harry Potter. So I grabbed his cat and dragged him into the house to show my parents. Here's the scarier, sadder part that I didn't realize until I was older. Apparently, someone had thrown the cat against the brick wall from their car. That was the noise I heard, and the reason the cat was walking so weird was because his spine was broken. There was a real monster that day. It just wasn't the cat. When I was 12-ish something, I came home to find the bedroom's lights on. If it was just my bedroom, then it wouldn't have been a problem, but my brother's room light was also on, and we never leave those lights on. Could have been my brother or my mom, but one was in the army while the other was at work. I was a little freaked out, but tried to tone it down by saying that I might have left them on before going out. Then I turn and see a couple of wooden spoons on top of our kitchen cabinet. I knew for a fact that I hadn't left any spoon sitting there. I also didn't recognize those two spoons. That was when I realized that someone had been inside our house. Long story short, I had lost my keys a few days prior, and my neighbor, who was the same age as I, found them. Instead of giving it back, he kept them with himself. Days later, his mom asked him to, I don't know, deliver something to my mom, but there was no one at home, so he used his keys to enter our house. He forgot his mom's wooden spoons there, and if it wasn't for this, we would never have found out that he entered our house. I think he stole money from us as well. I knew a kid when I was 10 who lived alone with his father up a dirt road in the middle of the woods. We were pretty good friends one summer. Everyone in our area, rural as hell, we all knew each other, thought the dad was really weird. Among the younger kids, there were rumors that the dad was a monster or a zombie or something. For one, he smelled fucking awful and had the rankest carry-on breath. Also, he would stare at the kids a lot, creepy as hell. When I was 14, I found out that my friend was not the guy's son, that the creepy guy had in fact kidnapped him when he was seven or so, and had kept him captive up in the woods, raping him repeatedly. My friend also turned 14 when I did, which apparently was too old to be appealing to the creepy dad, who promptly kidnapped another little boy from town about 70 miles away and brought him back to the cabin where he lived with my friend. He even was trying to pay another teenager I knew, a kind of lost boy with a juvenile record, to take my friend out into the woods and kill him so he could be alone with his new victim, who I think was five years old. My friend realized that the same had happened to him. He'd been brainwashed for seven years, told that his parents didn't want him anymore and had given him to the creepy guy to adopt. So he waited until the creep went to work, grabbed the little boy, and hitchhiked or walked about 40 miles to the nearest police station, saved the kid from a terrible fate ended up going back to the family he'd been taken from seven years before. It was in the news a lot, and a TV movie was made, etc. So, the creepy, smelly old Ryuto really was a fucking monster. He died in prison, and that was a good day. When I was around 11 years old, my family said I would randomly flip out for no reason. We'd be sitting at dinner, and my mom told me on more than one occasion, I'd throw my silverware across the room and start cursing and wailing on my brother completely unprovoked. I'd start beating the shit out of my then 8 and 10 year old brothers and one time I even hit my grandma. 
It got to a point where I'd have to eat by myself. The worst part of it was that I'd have no memory of these outbursts at all. I had no idea why my brothers were afraid of me, why I'd have to eat alone every night, and why everyone seemingly hated me. It was an extremely alienating childhood experience to say the least. And for a short time, I was suicidal, not in action, but definitely in my thoughts. My teachers, friends, and other family members couldn't understand what my family was talking about. To them, I was the sweetest, smartest, and humblest kid they'd ever met. I was loved by everyone outside of my home. My mom brought me to a psychologist, a therapist, and at one point a Catholic priest. She actually thought I may have shown signs of being possessed. She then told them I'd become a different kid in front of their eyes, and because I had no recollection of anything she'd been talking about, but seeing the extent of what she was willing to do to get to the bottom of it, I was inclined to believe her. One day, with my dad, I went to the movies and fell in the lobby and hit my head, gave myself a nasty concussion. To make a long story short, a CAT scan had been done, and they found out that I had a cyst in my head below the arachnoid of my left temporal lobe. The cyst was the size of a baseball and was growing. My brain was being crushed against the right side of my skull and was causing severe damage to my medulla oblongata. We went to a neurologist at Stony Brook University Hospital who took a closer look at my case. A very bright doctor by the name of Dr. Egner, this man saved my life. He said that falling and hitting my head was a miracle because I was mere weeks away from dying in my sleep of a hemorrhage and said I'd need to be in surgery by the end of that week. It was at that point he asked my mom why they hadn't brought me in sooner. She was like, well, I'm not a neurologist, so... And he said, I'm sure he's been showing signs of something going wrong, outbursts of anger, memory loss, unexplained nosebleeds, severe depression. I'll never forget the look on my mom's face. Her eyes widened. She turned and looked at me, grabbed my face, and started sobbing uncontrollably. I still get emotional thinking about this. She just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, over and over. Tears poured down her face. I just looked her in the eyes and said, it's okay, mommy. I'm going to be better soon, with a hopeful bounce in my voice. That was 22 years ago. The doctor saved my life, and there were no complications after the surgery. The outbursts had completely stopped, and after only one month of recovery, I was back in school, and I'd gotten on the honor roll for the first time in my life. I was able to fix my relationships with my brothers by being the best brother I could be for them, and for the last two years of my grandma's life, I made sure I told her I loved her every day and never said anything even remotely nasty to her. That surgery fixed me in so many ways, and I owe it all to a slip and fall at the movie theater. This happened to my cousin's friend, living in San Francisco in the early 90s. I was just a kid, so I don't remember the exact details. Her friend lived in a typical San Francisco apartment, often coming home late from work. One night, when she was trying to sleep, she heard loud banging noises coming from upstairs followed by sounds of washing. The washing noise went on for hours. She thought it was annoying, but completely normal. Upstairs, neighbor probably couldn't sleep and decided to move some furniture and deep clean the bathroom. Next day morning, she saw her neighbor going downstairs with large black trash bags. Again, she told herself it's weird, but normal, since her neighbor had been up late cleaning. A few weeks later, she learned that her upstairs neighbor had gotten into a dispute with the roommate, was killed and dismembered. The roommate was caught, and the police discovered large trash bags of body parts. The incident happened that night when she heard the strange noises. A little after I graduated high school, some friends and I were hanging out at a local park after dark, decided to go walk through the woods for the spookiness of it. About 20 minutes in, we hear this loud screaming from behind us and barely see this dark figure rushing towards us at what we would describe as supernatural speed. So we hauled ass and didn't stop, until we were out of the wooded area and didn't see it. A couple of friends claimed it appeared to be floating towards us as it howled like a banshee. We later found out that area of the woods is popular for homeless people to hang out in and shoot up. So instead of some sort of evil wood spirit, it was most likely a homeless heroin addict running at us at full speed and screaming. We lived in this big, beautiful farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, California. It was my first time having my own room. Mom was devastated because the landlord evicted us after a few months, saying we need the house back for the farmhands. There may have been more to it, but I was a little kid at the time. My uncle helped us pack everything up and asked if we'd left anything in the attic. 
Mom said she'd never been up there, but he was welcome to look. There was only one entrance through my bedroom. When he got up there, he found my favorite Cabbage Patch doll hung by its neck from the ceiling. There were candles in a circle beneath it that had burned to wax puddles and cigarette butts on the floor. It looked like someone was conducting a seance up there with my toys. After that, Mom was totally fine with us moving out as fast as humanly possible. Wish I had a better ending for you, but we never found out who did it or why. My only clue is, one night my sister claimed to see the silhouette of a man hanging out in her doorway watching her sleep. Mom was a single parent at the time. We didn't have a father figure or visiting relative, so who knows. Not sure if this really counts, but about five years ago, I got a phone call from my brother, and he just kept mumbling into the phone. He kept muttering random words, and because I was younger, stupid me thought he was possessed or something, but he had just had had a seizure and had just woken up. My brother gets really woozy and panicky after he has a seizure, scaring the living hell out of me. My friend lived up in these pitch black windy hills about 20 minutes from any ambient city lights. No traffic stoplights, street lights, nothing. One night, when driving up to visit him, I reached a stop sign. I looked left, no one there. Looked right, no one there. Then proceeded to make a left turn. From the time it took for me to look left, then right, a man stepped into the street about 10 feet in front of my car. I immediately slammed on my brakes, and he just stood there, my car lights hitting him, not moving. I slowly just drove around him, and he kept facing forward as I passed, didn't turn his head at all to look at me or make eye contact. I get to my friend's house, convinced I had seen a ghost and was freaking out about it. My friend asked me to describe the man I saw, and when I did, he tells me it was a pedophile that moved in down the street with his, the pedophile's parents, after getting out of jail. TL, DR, a man stepped in front of my car in the middle of nowhere, thought it was a ghost, but it ended up being a convicted and recently released from jail pedophile. 